none to something else, like n slash a or something, you can supply that as well. So let's just take a look at this. Let's take a look at what we have in my dict at the moment. Now let's say my dict dot from keys and we'll supply a list of keys. We'll supply greeting as one, obviously. We want to keep our two at the moment. First word, new word one and new word two just for a bit more data. And if we enter that we now as it, it shows us the return value and if we look at my dick ah I forgot to do one thing it's a lot like the um, copy method you it returns it so you actually have to say my dict equals we don't actually have to say my dict dot from keys we could just do an empty uh, an empty dictionary like so and then now if we look at my dict, it contains all of these. Uh, now, like I said, we can um, actually give it our own default value, and the way we do that is just supply the second argument uh, as that value. So, let's say our default value is some default value, the string. And now if we look at my dict, it's got all our keys and as a default value it's got some default value okay the third argument is the uh... The, sorry argument the third or fourth function rather method in fact uh... is the get method um... this is essentially exactly the same as using as indexing uh... dictionary so like my dict oops, greeting it's essentially the same as doing this, except uh, it's more forgiving. If we index my dict for some key that doesn't exist, it goes and throws an error. Now, thinking about this practically, if you've got this in a program, whenever an error comes up, it basically means you're, well, unless you've got the proper error handlers, which we'll come on to fairly soon. Um, but unless you've got the proper error handlers, essentially what's going to happen is uh, it could uh, chuck your program out the window, basically. Grind it to a halt. So the get method is a way of indexing a key, but a lot more forgiving. So if we just try mydict.get, let's try it with a key that we know already exists. Greeting, for instance it gives us back the value inside greeting but if we try my dick dot get blah j or g like I just did above it uh... it just returns nothing so it doesn't chuck an error it doesn't go oh crap you did some random shit which you shouldn't have done it just allows us by doesn't matter you know sort it out uh... so it's a lot more forgiving as you can see and i've said about fifty times um, you can also supply it a second argument, which is the default error message, essentially. Let's try this again, JRG, uh, but we'll say not found is as the second argument. It gives us back not found if it's not found it, but if it does find it, i.e. greeting, just gives us back the value. Okay, so really easy method. Um, the next method is the has underscore key method. Um, this is essentially exactly the same as checking for membership, which I'll just recap in a sec. But if we say has underscore key curse word, it just returns true if it does. And if we say my dick dot has underscore key or some random string, it returns false. And if we look at if we just recap um, on membership, let's say curse word in my dict. See, it does exactly the same thing. If we say blah 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 in my dict, it gives us back false. These two are essentially exactly the same, and for that reason, uh, Python no longer has the has key method in Python versions three and above. So if you are using those uh, three or above. Uh, I'm watching these tutorials. Don't bother with the has underscore key. Use the in 
keyword and in fact even if you uh, have a two point whatever version it's always better to do it the uh, the proper way I mean they've taken it out so it must not be that important and it isn't it does exactly the same way and I guess it's easier to look at oh well I don't know I'd say this is probably easier to look at but yeah just just stick with this because once you once the language gets new enough and you're gonna want to move up to version 3 you're not gonna wanna be stuck with the habit of using the has underscore key method you're gonna wanna be in the habit of using the in keyword so you're not gonna chuck errors overall you know, all over the place when you come into that version 3 um, the next function or method we have rather is the items well two methods items and it items um, which are essentially the same method, which is why I put them in one group, I guess you could call. Um, it just returns us uh, a list of the items. So if we do that, or sorry, a list of the um, key value pairs in my dict. There are other functions, or methods rather, which get us just the keys or just the values, which we'll come on to later. Um, but yeah, my dict dot items returns as a list um, with inside each value is a tuple or tuple, whatever you want to call it, uh, and it, in the, those tuples, tuples are the key value pairs. Okay, so I could say my dict dot items uh, zero one, and that would return as some default value. That's not a very good example because all the values are some default value. Okay, let's try this. My dictated items um, two zero. That returns as new word one because the third, remember, zero is the first. The third one two three, and then the first in the third uh, value is new word one, the key. Okay, and then iter items is basically the same thing. But it returns as a, an iterable object, an iterator, essentially, is what it's known as, um, which is used, which is a lot more, basically, it's a lot more efficient if you want to loop through the values, which we'll, we'll have more on iterable objects and iterators when we do look at loops in, uh, in the foreseeable future, I'd say, uh, next, well, probably in the 40s tutorials but yeah um, that's it for this tutorial next tutorial we're going to look at the remaining few there's uh, quite a few of them two of them at least are exactly the same are a lot like this so essentially there's only four more to look at but anyway for now guys over and out